the shall swell. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. be seated. He's a wonderful Savior. That crowd come back in that day and they asked him, said, well, did you lay hands on him and bring him back? They had a, their answer was something like this, that never a man spake like this man. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. He's done nothing worthy of death. Do you not realize I have the power to put you to death? And Jesus opened him that little old harmless mouth and said, you ain't got no power unless I give it to you. They ain't never been a Savior like our Savior. I mean, He really changes lives, don't He do it? Hey Amen. The world does their best to try to do what they do with, with education and playing with and toying with your mind. And, and, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. You get around that same crowd again, that same crowd will get in that mind. But whenever Jesus gets right down in your heart, he changes your nature. Amen. He puts a new want to down on the inside of you. You can't give no glory to man. Man tried that and it didn't work. But Jesus Christ, that's why we worship the same man. We're here today worshiping one person and his name is Jesus. And if your life has been changed, it ain't been a man that done it. Not on this side of the river. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. He's worthy, ain't he? Yeah, he is. Amen. In Matthew it said, the wise men said, where's Where's the Savior at? We've seen His star and we have come to worship Him. Amen. That's what I've done today is come to worship Him. Praise the Lord. Young people, come sing for us today. Come on, young people.
had this song on my heart for a few days, and I don't know if I can even remember how it goes, but we sung it at a, one of our Christmas plays one year, and it just always stood out to me as um, the meaning of Christmas. You know, as I was getting ready this morning, I told Randy, I said, you know, I said, they talk about how, you know, this one group of people have been discriminated against and this one's being discriminated against but when you really look around the Christians being discriminated against I mean we can't it's like every time I go to my closet or if I go to buy something you've got to buy 15 layers just to cover up because the way they make the clothes today they don't make them for the Christians they don't make them to be modest and you know when I was growing up my mama and she always told us, she said, when you go to church on Sunday, you wear your best. And, and I can remember we grew up poor, and I had one dress. And uh, that's the only time you wore that dress was to church, but you wore your best. And if that's all, you know, if I had that one dress, what we wore. And then when God laid it on my heart, convicted me when I was praying for Randy to be released, you know, God asked me to give up some things, and one of the things was God laid it on my heart to wear dresses and skirts, and I thought, Lord, I can't do that. I hate dresses. I hate skirts. I can't, and I only had one, and because uh, that's all I ever kept, I guess, because I was raised that way. I only had the one, and and I said, Lord, I said, if you really want me to do this, I said, you're going to have to help me because Randy was in prison and, and what little extra money I could make, I tried to pay for phone calls for us and I didn't really have a lot of extra money. And I said, if you really want me to do this, I'm going to do it. And uh, I went to church and Melanie brought me a big bag of dresses and skirts and she didn't even know that I had prayed about it. She didn't even know, but God told her. And she brought that to me, and, and I said, Lord, if you want me to do this, I'm going to do my best to do it. Yeah. And I've never went back on that. And sometimes when I, I mean, I go out in the beginning, I did gripe about it, and I complained. And when I'd have to crawl up under the house, or I'd have to do that, I thought, I can't do this with a skirt on, or you get caught on the fence as I was going out or something. And, and I said, Lord, you brought Randy out of prison. And I'm not going to complain when I get my skirt caught on something. Or if I have to crawl around on the ground. Or if I have to go milk the goats, whatever I have to do. I said, that's the least I can do for you. And, and when I was talking about being discriminated against, you know, we as Christians, we're going to have to stand up. And just and fight back a little bit. And just, you know... We can't, they're forcing us to accept the wrong. And uh, we've got to stand up and, and be a Christian in this day because people are watching us. This, this song, it talks about love reached out. Just pray for me. From a father's heart, a baby came. From a royal throne to grief and shame, God's heart divine seeking for mine, love reached out to me. Love reached out, God came near, crossed each boundary, calmed each fear, reaching to earth through humble birth, love reached out to me. Up a rugged hill to Calvary, on a rugged cross he set me free. His life for mine, oh, grace divine, love reached out to me. Love 
reached out. God came near, crossed each boundary, calmed each fear, reaching to earth through humble birth. Love reached out to me. Love reached out to me. You know, I don't really know exactly what the preacher's going to preach on this morning. You know, there's not but one message. Lost need to get saved. If you're backslid, you need to make things right again. Amen. And if you're right, just worship and praise the Lord. That's right. But uh, and I can't think of, you know, especially if somebody's lost here this morning, what a great time it is. Every day, I mean, the Bible says today's the day of salvation, but, but what a good time to be saved in this time of Christmas. When the melody's been written And the world have all been pinned And you've heard the Spirit calling Through some old sacred hymn In the valley of decision Tell me, friend, what will you do? This life has many choices. Eternity has to this world in all its pleasures will soon be passed away. The final invitation could be going out today. You're standing at the crossroads and the Savior's calling you. This life has many choices, eternity has to the straight and narrow rail leads to life, the broad way down below. What would it profit? To gain the world and lose your very soul. Tomorrow is uncertain. Our days on earth are few. This life has many choices. Eternity has to This life has many choices Eternity has to How true is that statement? Hell's full of really good people. But that's the choice they made to go there. Hell's full of wicked people. That's the choice they decided. Hell's full of all kinds of people. But nobody's in hell that didn't know something about the Savior. He's such an awesome God that He died for whosoever will let them come the invitation was given they didn't come I wonder how many people brother Johnny sat under an old time preacher and heard the gospel time and time again and got callous to it and cold to it and said you know I've got wild oats to sow somebody died this week 
younger than you. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, how many opportunities you think you're going to get? This may be your last day. This may be your, you're trying to scare me? If I could, you'd done be saved because I'd have done scared you. Amen. You need to think about your soul. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 14. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Thank you for being here. I do desire your prayers this morning that God would help us. Will you pray for me just a few minutes? Amen. I need to hear something from God. Matthew chapter 14. Good to have everybody with us. Good to see you. It's good to be seen, ain't it? My daddy says it's better to be seen than viewed. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, very familiar scripture, but this is what God has given me this morning, and I do desire you pray for me. Verse number 28, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. When Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. Do y'all believe this? to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Well, they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. That's all that I want to read this morning. May God bless you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. And I want to preach this morning, just a few moments, on the danger of being distracted. Amen. The danger of being distracted. And it's very easy to get distracted. Uh, my dad, uh, there's a, there's a fellow that lives right up the road from him. I reckon both of them, he's probably lived there longer than my dad, but my dad's lived in this country since he was about uh, just a teenager and just a young boy. They moved in this country and he's uh, almost 90 years old and the fellow that lives right up the road from him, he's about 92 I believe and uh, my dad, he works in the wood all the time out there by the road and, and uh, the other day that fellow stopped and talked to him and this is what he said, he said, heard. He said, I would uh, blow the horn and wave at you more as I go down the road. But he said, when I look your way, that's the way that I turn. And I'm afraid that I'll wreck in that curve if I try to look your way and wave at you as I'm coming down the road. I said all that to say this. It's very easy to get distracted. Amen. There's a lot of us that text while we're driving. And, uh, and uh, if you don't like that, I don't like it either. It's not very smart. And it's not that I don't want to get you a message or receive the one you sent from me. But there's a lot of lives at stake by being distracted. Amen. I want to say this morning, uh, walking this way with God, and uh, ju- God don't just plant you on this way and say, I'll see you in judgment. There's a lot of things that surround you as a child of God. Uh, can I say this morning, you're outnumbered if you don't know that. Amen. With the imps of hell, I know Jesus is all that we need. But it's very easy to get distracted. Amen. As we go through this uh, this time of Christmas, uh, you can feel it in the air as you come to church. Amen. As you go home, as you go to work. Amen. People's got things on their mind except for where they are. It's very easy to get distracted. Amen. As we're here in the house of God, it should be an awesome time to worship a king uh, that was born in Bethlehem. Amen. But it's very easy to get distracted. Amen. As we go about wondering what we're going to eat for dinner, uh, wondering about if we've bought all the gifts for all the kids and grandkids. Amen. And your mind is nowhere near uh, where you're sitting at today. Amen.
Amen. But I want you to know this morning, if all that was taken away, amen, if we had all everything we had uh, pulled out from under us, Jesus is still a firm foundation. Amen. And I want you to know this morning, the only way uh, that you can have true victory in this day and hour is to stay focused on the Savior. Amen. As Peter called out to the Lord, amen, with that went less than 24 hours before this situation, he saw Jesus uh, perform a great miracle. He fed 5,000 with two loaves, amen, five loaves and two fish, amen. But Peter, in the midst of the storm, uh, was scared half to death and out of his mind uh, because Jesus was not on board uh, with them. I don't know if you've ever been scared or not, amen. Now, when you put your faith and trust in God, you're expecting him to meet the need that you have. And he's not going to just jump because you said jump every single time. God uh, wants to see if you're going to love him uh, for who that he really is. And can I say this morning, if he don't ever answer another prayer for you, he's already done enough for you, amen, to love him and serve him and keep coming to church and praising him, amen. It don't take a whole lot to raise your hand, amen. You say, I don't feel anything, amen. I didn't know that you had to, it don't feel good to go through the drive through at the bank and pay the house payment, but God's give you a place to live. Amen. And we're going to have to praise Him. We're going to have to thank Him. You say you're trying to work something up. Can I say I shouldn't have to? Amen. Because He's already done enough before you got here. Amen. For you to thank Him and praise Him. It's very easy to get distracted. That's saying, preacher, you don't know what I've got going on in my life. You don't know what I've got going on in my life. But if Jesus is on the front row, amen, of our life, he should be the one I said he should be the one that we give all the glory and honor to and be careful you don't get distracted amen you can get distracted in the miracle amen Jesus said oh ye of little faith I believe Peter walked on water but brother Johnny I believe he's walking on faith amen Somebody said, Peter, everybody blames Peter for sinking, but Peter got out of the boat. Amen. You can blame somebody for not sounding good when they sing, but at least they sing. Come on. Amen. Jesus said, come on, Peter. Peter just stepped right down out of that boat. Right on them waves, right on that. Now, it would have been very easy, Randy, for God to say, peace be still before you get out, Peter. Hang on, I've got something else to do. Amen. That ain't what he said. He didn't say, Jesus, calm the storm. He said, bid me to come to you. Amen. Now, can I say something? That was a miracle. I've never read of it before or since. That man, a human being, that breathes air like me and you, has doubt like me and you, has trouble like me and you, you walked on the water in the midst of his miracle. Brother Brandon he was far enough away from the boat that he couldn't grab it. Amen and he was not far enough he was within reach of the Savior for him to get him. Amen the miracle was taking place. Amen but in the midst of all of that Peter got distracted. Amen. I want to say here and you've heard me say it I've seen people pray in this altar and the closest to God I ever seen them was when they didn't have a job amen when they got bad reports at the doctor because it regained their focus and because it don't matter if you've got a million dollars and you ain't got no insurance you take about amen a few chemo treatments and you have about two or three heart surgeries and you'll be broke as a convict come on talk to me amen you know you lay in the hospital about a month and a million dollars ain't nothing amen so all that money that you can pile up in the bank Amen. It can be gone in just a short time. But Jesus, hallelujah, when all that's gone, he's still there. Amen. So sometimes it takes that in our life. The dark places we learned in Sunday school, God will send you treasures in the darkness. Hallelujah. In the midst of all of that, amen. Sometimes he's got to jog our memory. Amen. So we won't be distracted and regain our focus and keep it on Jesus because the the miracles can get you bad distracted. Amen. Because you'll get your eyes off of him and get it on them. 
Jesus looked at Peter and he said, he had some fish there on the coals of cooking. And Peter had fished all night, hadn't caught anything. He said, cast your net on the right side, and he did, and engulfed a great multitude of fish, looked over on the shore and said, why, well, that's the Lord. He goes over there and Jesus said, come and dine. Come and dine. Amen. He all sat down and he asked Peter this question. Lovest thou me more than these? Because he had told him just a few short days before that to forsake all that and come follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. There wasn't anything wrong with the fishing, but he had something greater for him to do. But when that miracle worker was not inside of him, he went back to the fishing net. Amen. Jesus is not always going to be walking right beside you, holding your hand, pushing you up above every storm. He's going to let you walk through some of them. Hallelujah. And in the middle of all of that, I got a question for you. Lovest thou him more than them, or are you going to stay with him? Even though sometimes he don't seem like he's within a million miles, Jesus, I'm still going to stay focused. I'm not going to be distracted. Amen. Because if we not, may not be shouting at church but I'm still going to go and I'm going to do my part I'm going to read my Bible I'm going to pray I'm going to give my part when I get there I'm not going to expect everybody else to feed me I'm going to take something in my basket and when we get to the house of the Lord I'm going to go in the courts with praise I'm going in with thanksgiving he's been better than good to me it don't matter if nobody else praises the Lord I'm going to do it by myself amen oh yeah and if you'll do it and stay focused on him it'll amaze you what will happen in your life amen hey save me Lord save me one second he was walking on the water and the next second he was sinking not because of the Savior but because of the distraction the blessings in our life causes us to get distracted Some of us praise for better this and better that. And I love to see people pull up new cars and buy new homes. And I love all that because I know God's blessing them. But be careful you don't get distracted. Amen. Because the more you got, the more you got to tend with. Amen. Amen. The more you got to worry with. Come on, don't get distracted, amen, to where you start missing church on Wednesday night just to try to keep up with your neighbor. Amen. God wants you to have this and you want that. The Bible said he gave the children of Israel the desires of their heart but sent leanness to their soul. Amen. God's given some people in our eyes more than the other fella. But can I say God can trust them with this and you with this. Don't get distracted. Amen. Where's your eyes at this morning? I said where's your eyes at this morning? Amen. Are they on Jesus or are they on your surroundings? You ain't got to look up the road long to run out of the road amen the lane is narrow and the wheel is in your control and if you get your eyes at the wrong thing you'll go the wrong direction and either direction you go is danger I said danger so stay down the middle of the road there's Jesus is all you need amen when he gives it to you you'll be grateful for it but it won't be your God amen because you know who it come from the one writer said I look into the hill from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. It ain't from the world. It's going to burn up. But it comes from God. And don't lose focus on that. Amen. Amen. God puts us in certain situations. and wants us to be a warrior. Brother Jimmy, God wants us to be a warrior. But I'm afraid sometimes in the midst of that, Brother Carl, we get distracted with the Babylonian garment and the wedge of gold and the wedge of silver and we affect 30 some more people in the next battle and they die because of our distraction. And God wants you to be a warrior. Amen. When it come to Ai, God told them they could have 
that the spoil over there, but leave it alone over here. Amen. God told you no today. It don't mean he's going to say no tomorrow. He ain't going to say no to everything. Amen. God will let you have things, but he might have said no yesterday just to see if you would obey him, just because he knows. Amen. If you'll follow him, he can whisper in your ear where to go, where not to go. Amen. And if you'll acknowledge him in all your way, he shall direct your path. And if you'll go down that path, there's always victory at the end. You say, preacher, I feel like I'm following God and I'm in the worst storm of my life. Well, you may just be able to walk on water in this one, but you got to stay focused on Him. Amen. Of the way we, we always take the path of least resistance, but children of God that's led by Jesus, amen, Jesus don't always take the path of least resistance. He takes the path of the hill, amen, the hill country, so that somebody can watch you climb. You say you're crazy, amen, living like you live. And you say you're following Jesus. Amen. You're crazy. Look what you missed out on. You're exactly right. Amen. You know what I missed out on? Heartache and trouble. Amen. I've got a God that will stay with you in the midnight hour. And if you'll stay focused on Him and don't be distracted, don't look around you. You don't need what the world's got. You can't spend it anyhow. Amen. Stay with God and the victory will be evident in your life. Amen. Coming out the other side of Jericho, Achan had more than all of them did. He thought. Amen. But he had to bury it all. To stay away from the judgment, he thought. So don't be distracted. Several of us in here own our own business. And I'm thankful for that. There's a lot of worry that goes along with it, but I am thankful for that. But let's be careful we don't get distracted. Because it's very easy to get distracted. Because when the bank account's up here, and you want this, and you look over there and you say, well, I can afford it. And God's over there, Brother John, he said, why don't you ask me? I don't have to ask him. I don't have to ask him because I'll just go over and write a check and let him have it. And that's great. But God might not have wanted you to have that one. He might have wanted you to have that one. I told the story in Sunday school and some of you have heard me tell it before. I'm going to tell it again. This old preacher man, he got behind the pulpit, preached just a good old time man. Amen. Missionary come to the church and he looked out in the parking lot and the car the missionary was driving was just an old piece of junk. God spoke to the preacher's heart and said, give him your car. So after church, Brother Albert, he goes out there and he tells, tells the missionary, God spoke to him and told me to give you my car. Gives him the keys, gives him the title. He goes down the road. There stands the preacher without a car. That's all right. God's going to provide. Now, how do you mean you think? And if I'm going to give you my 2007 truck, Jesus, I'm expecting you to give me a new one. But now that ain't the way Jesus works. So he goes down to the car lot. And he's looking for him a car. And over here in the corner... Sets a piece of junk. And the Holy Ghost says, that's it. And the preacher's like, now wait a minute. Say that again, I didn't hear you right. Holy Ghost says, that's it. So the preacher listened. He went down there and he asked that fellow about the old car. Of course, the fellow thought he was crazy too. But he bought it. Headed down the road. Reached over, turned the air conditioner on. What do you think? Sure it don't. So as he goes to roll his window down, and when he made one crank, the window went, pow, right down inside. Y'all remember them old cars? Fell down inside of itself. Went to roll it back up, freewheeling. So he says, all right. So he gets home. He's about half aggravated. I would have been too, sir. We won't get into all that. So he says, I'm going to have to fix my, fix my car door. So he goes and gets his tool, tools. If he's like me, he probably can't find them. So he takes the 
inner part of the door off to put the window back up. And that whole door is packed full of $100 bills. Some drug dealer used that car and that's where he hid all of his money was in the door. God spoke to him and said, now you can go get your car. We'll shout the victory over that because God come through. But I wonder how many of them fellows that's been in your, your car lot spiritually we passed by because we was distracted. We get distracted very easy when we listen to the voice of God. Most of the time, we create His own voice out of our own mind because it's what we want and not what He wants. So listen to me. Don't get distracted. I don't know how many people in here is not married. A few. I'm looking at my own youngin. Because she's not. Don't be distracted. Oh, we laugh and cut up. But you give it about a year and it turns upside down and it's living hell on earth in your house. You'd say, I wish I would have listened to that preacher. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I want you to know if you really love them, they're going to be beautiful anyway. It don't matter if they're on the front page of a magazine. When you really love them, that's the beauty of it. I said that's the beauty of it because most of that can be washed off. Amen. Give it about 50 or 60 years and you'll wonder where did it go anyway. But if you love them for what's in the heart, I said love them for what's in the heart. Don't be distracted. Amen. With what you see with your eye, listen to the voice of God. Amen. And be sure the world ain't got you so cluttered up that you can't hear His voice. God help us to listen and what he tells you to do will be right every time amen you may be where you are because you listen to God or you might be where you are because you did and when you look in the mirror every single morning you have nobody to blame but yourself so Brandon can I tell you Morgan don't be distracted. If Jesus don't come and nature goes as it is, you've got a lot of years left. Be careful you don't get distracted. Taylor, Tiffany, right in the middle of your life, got a beautiful daughter. Be careful you don't get distracted. Because you don't got to look that way long, Tiffany, until you're headed for trouble. Thank God, Brother John. On just about a foot outside of that white line is something that gets on your nerves if you hit it very long. But it's called grace. Because it lets you know, I'm running out of the road. Nobody that hits that automatically says, well, I, I intend to direct, just jerk it and go over the embankment down off in the ravine. Amen. No, sir. Oh, no. What we do, Elaine, is say, hey, and get her back in the road. Most of the time, we're distracted when we run out of the road. We're going to sleep. We're not got our mind on our business. Johnny's got a, his vehicle when you cross the yellow line. It beeps. I told him, I said, I'd cut that thing off. Man, I, I could have stand that. Hey Amen. I want to drive where I want to drive and don't want it warning me. And that's how most of us are. Hey Amen. In our life, I want to live like I want to live. I want to do what I want to do. And I don't want nobody telling me what to do. Hey Amen. Well, you just turn that warning off in your life and see how many more curves it is down the road uh, before you're in trouble. Don't be distracted because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. They ain't room for no Distraction because there's distractions everywhere, but they ain't room for it on this straight and narrow way. Keep your eyes on the prize. We're almost home. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's high. Most vehicle accidents that people die is within two miles of their home. Because they feel so confident 
they could almost drive with their eyes closed. And they wind, not, wind up not making it. Being so close home, yet so distracted. Brother Johnny, as close as we are to seeing them skies just roll back like a scroll, and he who was pierced stepping out, if there's ever been a time that the church needs to be at full salute to the call of God, it's now. But yet we're so distracted. You know what broke my heart the other night in a Christmas, fl- Christmas parade? Took the kids down there to watch it, and we used to do it too, so I guess I'm condemning ourselves. You know how many churches was in it? One church sign that was advertising Boy Scouts is it. We're so distracted. Everything we preach against had their own float. I'm talking about right out in a wide open view for our kids to see. We was at a place to eat last night and there was people in there that was Everything against what we preach. Malachi was just gawking. I said, don't stare, son. I don't want them to think we're impressed with them at all. But yet we're so distracted. I'll let my light shine if it don't have to shine past 12. No, I'm too busy. I'm not going to church tonight. You're distracted. Unless flu breaks out or something like that, yes, we're going to have a service next Sunday at 2 o'clock. I would hate for my Savior's birthday to go by and us not be here. I wouldn't want to be so distracted with opening up a gift that they're going to scoot in the corner and play in the box when the greatest gift of all was laid in a manger. For we're so distracted we don't even realize it. What's got our attention? It don't take much, David. It don't take much to distract you. How much Bible do you read? Do we read? Versus how much YouTube and how much you're on your phone. We'd be embarrassed if it was put on the wall. How much time we spent with God. You might not be embarrassed. If not, then you'll be fine. Because if you've got God in your life and you'll listen to what He says, you can make it. The times ain't got nothing to do with God. The waves being big didn't have nothing to do with Peter sinking or walking. It was his distraction that made him sink. That stuff going on in your life ain't got nothing to do with the ability to God but it's whether or not you keep your eyes on Him. In the time of storm in our life, we look at the wave and sometimes we give up on God. Then sometimes the blessings come and we think we can walk on it by ourselves and we'll get distracted. The focus of this whole message is you better keep your eyes on Jesus. Tucker, I love you. I want to go to heaven with you. But I've got to stay focused and so do you. I want to see victory in all y'all's life. You get behind the pulpit, boys, and you open the Bible. It's going to take more than words. It's going to take a relationship with God to have the power. And you've got to stay focused and don't be distracted. Let's all stand. You see, there's a lot of things in our life that gets, gets us distracted. You say, God, help me, help me to keep my eyes on you. You may admit to yourself by coming to the altar. said, I'll be honest, there's a lot of things that's got me distracted. The decisions we make in our life go with us the rest of our life. If you don't listen and you make the wrong decision, 
It'll be a distraction to you your whole life. You'll have to outgrow it spiritually. But if you'll listen to him, you don't have to make that mistake. Some of the things in our life, the decisions we make by having it's not a sin, but by not listening can be a thorn in our life. Anybody else need to pray? Lord, in Jesus' name, help me, please. Help me, please. Help me, please. God, we ask you, Lord, to move in our life and move in our ministry and move in our church. Help us, please. Keep our eyes on you. Help us, God. Help us, please.